on and then we will get right into this everyday simple pick me up makeup video. Hello Des, I think Des is most excited for this. So we'll start by introducing myself briefly and then we will get right to it. I will warn you, I love to chit chat. So I will try my best to keep this short and sweet, but also give you some knowledge in regards to creating the flawless, everyday yet simple makeup look. So my name is Gretzi and I am the owner of two businesses here in Edmonton. The first being GP Makeup The Beauty House. I am located downtown St. Albert. We actually just moved into a brand new retail location a month ago, clearly not operating right now. However, we are still online. And so GP Makeup The Beauty House is everything beauty products and beauty services, whether that be skincare, cosmetics, hair care, body care. And then we also just launched prior to this whole COVID uh, event, we launched our brow lamination and brow bar. So we'll talk about that a little bit as we get into the video. And then my other business is a partnership with Amy Parker and it is called Glam Artistry Inc. And that's actually how we started to connect with Des. Back when we were starting out, she did a feature of us on the news. And so we are specialized in the bridal and event industry, primarily focused on makeup artistry and hair. So if there are any brides that are going to be getting married next year or potentially postponing your event, please get in contact with us. We would love to chat with you. So today we're going to do, like I said, an everyday makeup look. And today's actually a perfect day because if you can see here, I do have a few imperfections on my face and that honestly is a huge result of just baking too much to calm my boredom through this. Not sure if anybody can relate to that. So we're gonna dive right in. For me, makeup is all about looking natural. So whether I'm doing a super minimal look or I want to amp it up for an evening out, I still like the skin to look like skin and I still like your features to look like your own naturally. And so that's kind of the approach that we take with everything that we do. So I'm gonna start off by first prepping my skin. I think a big misconception is in makeup is that people think that they have to have the most expensive makeup primer out there to have their makeup last through the day. And that being said, that they have to have the most exp expensive products on the market to have that flawless look. And I totally disagree with that. For sure, there are some products that are better than others, but for the most part, it's all in the prep of the skin and in the application process and how you apply it. So that's what we're going to dive into. And of course, if you guys have any questions as we go, then please feel free to ask. So we're gonna start just by prepping the skin. Um, this right here that I'm gonna use, this is the Key Lime Refresh uh, Facial Toner by My Skin by GP Makeup. This is actually a skincare line that I launched in September of uh, 2019. And what's so cool about this line, we now have seven products and counting. It's actually made right here in Edmonton, Alberta. And everything is 100% natural and plant-based and it's aimed towards all skin types, especially those with super sensitive skin or potentially acne prone skin as well. So whether you are more dry, oily combination, if you are a mature skin type, my mom uses this line, my fiance uses this, my brother, you name it. And uh, if you check out on Instagram there, GP Makeup, you can see a bunch of awesome reviews. So yeah, made right here in Edmonton, and I like to call this line affordable luxury. You're getting those luxurious ingredients, luxury products, but at an affordable price point. And every product in the line, it actually ranges from 20 to $38 being the most expensive product. So it's very accessible and it lasts forever, which is great. So this toner, I just kind of pop that everywhere. A toner, if you're not familiar with, the whole point of it is to balance out the pH of your skin. So whether you are very oily or let's say you have some redness or inflammation, like I do with these few breakouts here, it's great for that. Um, and overall, it's just a great way to kind of get that excess oil and dirt off of the face before we go to hydrate. Which brings us to our next step, which is the morning grapefruit day cream. So for me, like I said, I don't really believe in makeup primers in regards to the complexion. I'm all about a good hydration. And the reason being is I find a lot of primers out there, they're very silicone based. So what they do is they kind of 
create a nice base for you but it feels a little bit almost slippery or waxy and I don't like that because that way I find that the makeup that you add on top of that is just kind of stacking on those layers where rather if you have a really good moisturizer that your skin can easily absorb and feel refreshed and hydrated it allows us to kind of press the makeup into the skin and by makeup I mean your foundation, concealer, BB cream, whatever you're using. So I consider this morning grapefruit day cream to be part of my skincare routine, but also the perfect step to a perfect makeup prep. I use this on all of my clients and it's just a beautiful base. If you are more of a dry skin type, then you could definitely instead of the day cream opt for the night cream. It's called Vanilla Blush. It's just a little richer, but it's nice because it's still not um, greasy or heavy. It can be absorbed very, very quickly. So that is that. It smells like grapefruit. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of Palm Springs, which I was supposed to be headed off to in a few days, but that's okay. And then the last thing is applying my Luminous Under Eye Serum. So a serum or an eye cream either works. I like this guy, though, from the line. It's only $20, by the way. I've had this whole thing actually since June and you can see how much is still left. And I use this day and night. Um, but I love this because it's kind of a two in one. It's a serum so it gets really deep into the skin at the deepest level, but it also works as a cream. And what's so great about that is that when we go to apply all of our concealer and whatnot, we're not gonna have any creasing or any fine lines. So if you find that you put on makeup and after an hour, two hours, or the end of the day, you're finding that all of your concealer and product here is really like dry and maybe creased looking, that is typically a result of dehydration of the skin. So what's happening is all of those products are just kind of latching onto those fine line areas. And that's why you're gonna get that uneven and unflawless look. So making sure that you do this prep is so important and this just amps up the whole experience because it kind of feels like you're giving yourself a mini facial. Great. So I think we're going to start with the skin today. Sometimes I start with the eyes. Sometimes I start with the skin. The only time that I won't start with the eyes, or sorry, the only time that I will start with the eyes, like no matter what, is if I'm doing a really dark eyeshadow look that has a lot of fallout. So if you find that you you have eyeshadows that leave a lot of fallout or you get all of that eyeshadow powder underneath, then I would recommend starting off with the eyeshadow because that way when you're done that, you can just give it a wipe. Where if you do the vice versa and you do your face makeup all perfectly, then you get eyeshadow all over that. You're just kind of wasting your time. Um, but for today, we're gonna keep the eyes like really simple since this is an everyday look. So we're gonna start with the face. Now I tried to pull out some products that are uh, ones that I obviously love, but are also very affordable. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with like an $80 foundation, but let's get real, it's not needed at all times. So the one that I'm going to show you, I just wanna see if I can find my other one here. Not sure if any of you have tried this, but it is phenomenal. Okay, these are my two favorite drugstore foundations, so if you want to take a screenshot of these, go ahead. So this guy here is by L'Oreal and it's called L'Oreal Infallible. And then this guy here is Maybelline Fit Me. And so Maybelline Fit Me comes in two different versions of this guy. There's one called Hydrate and Smooth, which is what I have here. And then they have one called Matte and Poreless. So Hydrate and Smooth is just to give you more of that skin-like finish, a little dewier of a look. If you like your skin to look completely matte, then I would go for the Matte and Poreless one. And I like both of these foundations because they just blend so nicely into the skin. And to be honest, if I could fill my whole makeup artistry kit with these, I would, but I just can't. However, for my personal use, I love both of these. This one is a little bit more of a stiffer price point for a drugstore foundation. I believe it's about $22 on average, where Maybelline Fit Me is like nine bucks and sometimes London Drugs or Shoppers has insane deals on it. And I kid you not, you can get it for $5.99. So today we are going to go with the infallible foundation just because I feel like this one doesn't have as much attention as it should. Um, and I'm assuming that's Des on there saying that she has uh, the Maybelline Fit Me. A lot of people have tried this. So if you haven't, try them both, honestly. This one I will say is a little bit lighter. But if you need more coverage, then potentially go for the Hydrate and Smooth. What's great about both of them though is that you can definitely um build them up so if you need more coverage in certain areas you can do that with either or today though i feel like using hydrate and smooth so what i'm going to do is just pop a few pumps of this onto the back of my hand 
I'll, sometimes you'll see videos of people on Instagram like going like this and putting it on their brush. I'm not really fond of doing that because you just have so much product on the brush and then it makes it really difficult to apply that all over the skin. So I like to instead just put that on the back of my hand and that way I can just put the amount of product that I want to on this brush. And then I just have a mirror over here. And I like to start to apply this in downwards motions. And it's a very thin layer. Another thing you might notice is that this color looks very dark compared to the rest of my space. But if you look here, this is actually blending really nicely into my decollete area. So if you have a hard time with color matching, I always tell people, Firstly, never go into a store and color match based on the back of your hand because if you look here, that would not match, of course. The big thing is look on the side of your face and the whole goal is we want our face, our neck, and our decollete. I know mine's a little hidden because I'm wearing a hoodie. We want that to all look cohesive and it's very typical that your neck part here is very, very light because our chin kind of um, hides our sun exposure in that area. So you kind of want to get one that's going to suit all three areas. And I always start applying the foundation in the centers of the face or the areas that kind of need the most coverage. So that usually is around the cheeks, down the center of the nose, the middle of the forehead. And for all those other areas, I'll just kind of buff the product out towards those because the way I see it, like why put on the same amount of makeup everywhere when not all of that skin needs that coverage of course we want it to be color matching flawlessly but we don't need it to be like so cakey especially around your hairline and stuff because it's quite often that we don't really need any coverage there and then always blend it down we never want to see that line i feel like my lighting is looking a little crazy right now Thanks for the demo, enjoying it. Thank you for tuning in. Okay. And you might notice here, you guys, that I didn't actually bring this foundation too much up underneath the under eye area. And the reason being is because we are going to go in with some concealer. So I don't wanna add more product where we don't need it. And a bunch of that product is actually kind of absorbed into my hand. So you can see here how nice this foundation is though. If I don't know if you can tell much on camera here, but in the mirror, like my skin looks like skin and it's not cakey at all. I like the L'Oreal Infallible because it just has a really nice skin finish. If you are a mature client, this is totally suitable for you as well. And that's another thing I want to mention. If you are more of a mature skin type or if you are experiencing fine lines and stuff, you typically want to try to stay away from mattes because mattes just kind of absorb into those areas and it looks a little more dull. We're using something like this that has a little bit of luminosity. It just kind of adds some hydration and youth back into your complexion. How often do you clean your, clean your brushes best product? So for our professional kits, we clean them between every client, of course, and then we do like a huge... Uh, makeup brush bath after every booking for my personal brushes. I try to clean them like every two weeks or so um, Definitely it also depends on you know, what kind of products you're using like I find that foundation brushes They always need to be cleaned the most just because they can start to Just get like hard and solidified um, But as long as you're not sharing your brushes with other people, especially eye brushes It's not the end of the world if you don't do it every two weeks. That's like what you should do um, but even once a month would be fine. But then again, there's people like Amy, who's a germaphobe and she cleans her brushes like every day. So it's just, just up to you, but that's what I do. And I feel like typically you can just feel when your brushes aren't working out because your makeup maybe isn't turning out as flawless. Okay, there we go. I turned that light off. The sun's coming through my window here and I feel like that was making me look very orange. <laughs> Loving this, great product recs and application tips, awesome. Okay, there, that's, that's better. I was looking like a carrot or something. Okay, so look how nice that L'Oreal Infallible Foundation is. This color here, I don't know if it's even on here. It's a darker one for sure. Sorry guys, I don't have the shade. It's so silly, but they put the shade on the cap and I got rid of the cap. 
or I lost it, I should say. Okay, so that's that. So now let's deal with this whole situation. And I feel like this is what everybody should be tuning in on this video for, because whenever I talk about this, especially when my clients come into the beauty house, they're mind blown and I love to demo this on people because they just relate to it and it resonates with them and they are sold. So if you find, and I just take some foundation off here so we can talk about this a bit better. So please give me a thumbs up on this video if you find that no matter how much concealer you put underneath your eyes, you still look dark on the inner corner. Can anybody like agree with that? If so, please let me know because I feel like this is a struggle for a lot of women. And the thing with that is some days are better or worse than others. So some days, like today, I'm not too bad. Some days though, do you guys find that maybe you were like really purple here or really just dark? And other days you're like, wow, I look great. So typically that can stem from a few things. Sometimes it's hereditary to pull those darker colors in that inner uh, tear duct area. Sometimes it's from tiredness. That's like me whenever I'm really exhausted. I find if I wake up, I have like those purple blue tones there. And so what do we naturally want to do? We want to put on like 10 pounds of concealer and then call it a day. But no matter what, we still look kind of gray and just not alive on that inner corner of the eye. So I'm going to show you my holy grail. We do this on like all of our makeup clients as well. And this product right here that I'm going to talk about for anybody new popping on, the important part before using this product is using our under eye serum because it gave us a really nice hydration and prep so that this product isn't going to latch on into those areas. So this product right here, it's by a brand called Visanti Cosmetics, and this is called their Concealer Duo. You might be wondering where you can get this. We actually carry this at the Beauty House. Again, I'm closed right now, but we are online, and we do have uh, free shipping right now as well as local pickup. So if you wanna pick one of these up, I would be more than happy for you to try this. It is $26, it lasts ages. And this is in the shade called A2. It's the only shade I actually have on my website right now. And this duo is great for light to medium skin types. If you are in that darker range, we do have another one. It's called O2. So that would be suitable for you. So what you'll see about this concealer duo, it comes with two shades here. We have a concealer shade and then a peach shade. The peach shade here is what is going to change your life. And I also have to mention, I've had under eye filler in the past, about two years ago almost now. And you guys, like, just save yourself the money and stress and just get this, because it's even more powerful than doing that. Although I do recommend doing that as well. Okay, so the reason why we always find that we're so much darker here than here is because we have that problem area of the purple blue tones. So if you look on a color wheel, the opposite to those tones is something in that orangey peachy zone. So what we're going to do is take a denser buffer brush. We also have these on the website. I believe they're $21. Highly recommend the concealer brush, you guys, because just looking at this, you can see this is a very dense cream product. And from, I'm sure, experience in the past, those can get cakey really easily. However, with the under eye serum, having that good prep there and a brush that just puts on like a paper thin amount and blends it at the same time, that's what's gonna make it look so flawless. So I have a little bit on the brush here and I'll just do the one eye to show the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this and I'm going to concentrate this on the inner corner of the eye. And I love this brush that they carry because it acts as like an applicator brush, but also a blending brush. And you guys see how I'm also scooping it into the inner corner here. The reason for doing that is because head on, you might not notice, but from the side, you don't want it to look really dark there. And that's where we pull a lot of that darkness. So I always will scoop it in. And then when there's not much left on the brush, I'll just kind of buff it outwards. So you'll see right now, Look how different that looks. Like it's so crazy. It looks like I just got my under eyes filled. So you can see it just literally tightens this up. It looks more healthy. We look more awake. And from here to here, our pigmentation is the same. Where this, you can still see, especially in the shadow, you see that tired effect there. So you guys need this, 26 bucks. Maybe Des can um, link the website for gpmakeupinc.com. 
after this for you guys to check it out. And also too, Vasanti Cosmetics is a Canadian company founded by three sisters. They're called the Vasanti Sisters. Really nice, amazing women. And most of their products are made in Canada too. So it's really awesome. What do you guys think of this? So we're gonna go ahead and do the other eye. Again, focusing it on the inner corner because that's where we're typically pulling. And I just want to mention that I barely have any product on this brush, but that's what's so nice about it. You don't need a lot, but a little goes a really long way. And again, that inner corner here. Wow, I feel like a new woman. Did you apply the peach tone first? Yes, we've only dived in to the peach tone. That's all we're doing right now. Okay. There we go. Okay, so peach tone with the brush. This brush makes a really big difference. I've tried it with other brushes and it just gets too cakey or I find that I'm having to like add and add and add where this just kind of gives you the perfect application. Okay, so that's it, the peach on the inner corner of the eyes. Now I'm awake. So now what we're going to do, honestly, you could just leave it like this. However, you probably can't tell on camera, but in person, with using this peach, you're like, hmm, my under eyes now look a little peachy. However, we got that pigmentation under control. So this is where now I like to go in with a thin amount of concealer. So whatever your favorite concealer is, or if you want, you can definitely use the concealer that comes in here. However, since this is a cream product, I like to kind of go over it with more of a liquid based product just to make it a little softer. But if you want to have that really sculpted effect, you're totally welcome to use the concealer side. But I'm going to show you a concealer that I love. This one is again a Maybelline product. It's called Maybelline Fit Me. And what we're going to do, this is in the shade light number 15. I'm just going to apply, I scraped it off here just so you know a really thin layer. It looks like a lot, but I swear to you guys, it's paper thin. And we basically want to create like this triangle effect. And so what this is going to do is we already dealt with that darkness on the inner corner. We color corrected. Now we're just going to overall brighten the under eyes. And just because we're doing a video, I might as well teach you more. If you want to be like more dramatic about this, or let's say it's like a night out, I like to do a little bit down the center of my nose. And on the chin's kind of nice too. Or if you want between the eyebrows as well. I don't always do this, but I'll just show you since I'm here. Okay, so I like this. I honestly love this pair with this. Maybelline Fit Me is a good dupe for NARS Creamy Radiance Concealer. If you guys have tried that, it's a lot more pricey. So I would definitely opt for this. And then what we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna pull out my beauty blender. I'd love to use the beauty blender for underneath the eyes. And we'll also go over the foundation actually with this as well. And we're just going to blend that in. And so what this does is I feel like it just kind of marries together the under eye area with the rest of the complexion. And just so you guys know, obviously we're talking and getting really in depth, but if I were to do this as my everyday makeup look, this should take about 15 minutes. And again, you don't have to do all of that concealer that I did on the center of the face. That's just being extra, but I thought I would just show you how to do it. And then I'm just going to go over the rest of the skin with this beauty blender. I love to apply my foundation with a brush and then go over it with the blender because the foundation with the brush, it's great for getting an even layer, but then I love to go over with the beauty blender because it presses it into the skin. So if you find that after a day of work or even a few hours or the end of the night, you're like, where did my makeup go? It's because you're having an improper application and your makeup just isn't staying put. So that's why that good base with the morning grapefruit day cream and then really blending these products into the skin, that's gonna really save your life. What can you do about bags? So definitely with under eye bags, for sure the coloration for like an instant kind of fix, that's gonna help with that purple blue tone that we talked about. Now, if you're looking for more of a long-term effect to minimize, maybe you have a lot of inflammation or swelling, um, there's two things you could do. One, actually, this under eye serum is amazing for under eye bags, especially if you have that really dark effect or if it's really puffy. I actually have one client that did an impeccable review on this. If you want to send me a message on Instagram after, I'll send you the link for it. It's amazing. Essentially, she had like almost brown under eyes. And after using this for a few months, her skin is like 
bright and white and it just looks phenomenal. So this is great for the anti-aging, that puffiness that we speak of. But if you're looking for like an instant fix, you definitely, I mean, I've gotten under eye filler. It definitely does make a difference. But again, under eye filler isn't gonna completely get rid of that dark skin look. So that's why a product like this is great. Okay, so that's that. So now, in terms of powder, my rule is whatever is like a wet product, we always need to set it into place so that it doesn't move. So if you find that through the day you have that creasing going on, you either didn't set at all or you set poorly. So I'm gonna go in with this Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. If you want a drugstore version, a great one that we love is uh, by Marcel Cosmetics. You can get it anywhere, Walmart, Shoppers, London Drugs and they have a translucent powder. It has a little bit of a pink kind of hue to it. It's really nice and um, just beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I just dip my beauty blender right into the powder, and then all I'm going to do is just pop that there. Now, I'll tell you right now, you might see videos where people do this and they'll like leave it on for 10 minutes or so. I do not recommend that at all, especially if you are more of a mature skin type. For me, I like to do it with the blender just because it gets it really like pressed into the skin and I'll leave it on for like one minute or so. But if you are more of a mature skin type or if you have a lot of fine lines in that area, I would just use a loose kind of powder brush for under the eyes, even like a blending brush like this would be great and just kind of dust it on. So now that I did that, I'm just going to dust that off. So I like that because it kind of presses it into the skin. Now, if you are oily, let's say in your T-zone or other areas of the skin, you can definitely dust those areas as well. But for me, I don't like to put product where you don't need it. So I just kind of apply it in the areas that I feel like I need to. But the rest of the skin, that's why I love those foundations. You don't have to set them. They kind of set themselves. Okay, what do we think? What's the time here? 12, making progress. Any questions about that? While we kind of amp up everything else now, this is where the fun happens because now we have a good a good base. So for the, we're gonna go to the eyes and at the end we'll jump back into adding blush and all of that. So for the eyes, this is like what I do for an everyday makeup look. I like to keep it really simple and easy. Step one, I like to use this product by MAC. It's called a Painterly Paint Pot. So the color is called Painterly. And you'll see here, this is essentially like a cream shadow. So what I love about this, I just take a thin brush. You can also even use your fingers if you wish. And I just apply this all over my eyelid. And this is great because this can be worn on its own or this can also be worn as a eyeshadow primer prior to putting on any eyeshadow. And I bring this up to the brow bone, you can see. So this color kind of has like a pinky brown undertone. If you like more of that really bright look, they have one called Soft Ochre. And it's more of a yellow undertone. Like it literally looks like a yellow concealer. But I like this one just because it kind of blends into my skin tone. Do you guys see though what the difference, like what a difference this makes just by doing that? It just kind of like opened up that eye and just made it look a little more awake. This also counteracted any of that purple blue that we have on the eyelid. And again, you can bring it right up to the brow bone. And when I am bringing it up to the brow bone, it is like a paper thin amount. So we don't want to like see this line of separation. And again, always scoop in on the inner corner. Yeah, this is a really phenomenal product. This is great if you're just like in a hurry even and you want to look somewhat put together or awake. This is a great one and it's great if you're gonna layer it with um, eyeshadow after. So for an everyday eye look, all I do is step one. And then step two, I actually just take like my favorite matte bronzer. This is by Benefit, it's called their Hula Bronzer. Even if you have like a light color matte eyeshadow, like a brown or maybe a purple or something, you always just wanna use a matte for this step. I'm taking a fluffy brush here and I just wanna talk about the importance of a brush like this. So if you find that you put on eyeshadow and you're stuck with this harsh line and you just can never get it to look seamless and flawless, 
it could likely be because you're using a blending brush and that's what's so frustrating about the makeup industry they call all of these brushes what they should be used for but they work like very oppositely in how they should so there's a lot of blending brushes out there i don't even really own one to show you the difference um but there's a lot of them that there can be like really skinny and they're super super dense or they're like a fatter brush and they're really dense this one though if you see it definitely has structure to it but it's more fluffy this is the kind of brush you need so if you're using something that has more of a density like this let's say where it's like rock hard like i can't even really push down on the bristles but this one you can you need a brush like this and what that does is it does the work for you so i'm just going to dip this into my bronzer here and then i just look into the mirror and i'm just going to pop this into the soft crease of the eye and so what where that is is it's essentially your eye socket so i'm just framing my eye with this and i'm being very light-handed i'm just going back and forth there's no talent needed for this but if you don't have the right brush then you're going to need some talent so save yourself the hassle and get a brush like this and i just like to do this one color for a daily look because i find that it just kind of brings some warmth if you like more of that winged out look, I like to just kind of buff it outwards just so you don't have that hard stop there. And again, whenever you're doing any work in the crease, always mattes, never shimmers. Shimmers and eyeshadow should only ever be used on your eyelid, so underneath the crease down, and then if you want on the brow bone, never in the crease. The point of carving out the crease is to enhance the shadow and to add structure back into that area and you can't really add shadow to something when you're adding a highlight to it, if that makes sense. Okay, that's that. And then if you like that look of, um, I mean, I know a lot of people don't like Kim Kardashian, but I love her. But if you like that look of that kind of smoked out look underneath the lash line there, you can just take that same bronzer and just put it under here. And that's why I love this Benefit Hula Bronzer. See how that just kind of like brought my eye all together? That's why I love the bronzer though. It works good on honestly all skin types. It's so soft. And since we have the bronzer out, we're just gonna go ahead now and apply this in some areas of the skin. I'm taking, this is from Sephora Collection, a lot of these brushes. This is like an angled kind of contour brush. Looks like a blush brush just with an angle on it. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to carve out our cheekbones here. So this is what I guess we could call a soft contour. You'll see that I kind of buff the product upwards and where we are applying this, if you make a fishy face, it's the hollows of the cheeks. So we never wanna go below that or we're gonna make our face look like it's going down. We want to kind of keep it like right under that cheekbone and you can feel it with your fingers. And then we kind of scoop it up. And I don't go all the way in because we're going to apply some blush in this area. But you see how this just lifted my face there? Where here I look really square. And if you have a larger forehead like myself, then you can definitely go ahead and kind of add some of this around those areas. If you have a smaller forehead here, I would stay away from this it's going to make your your forehead look even tinier so this is nice just kind of gives you a sun-kissed look add some dimension into the skin and then you can go a little bit on the jawline and then always 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 just make sure this is brought down What a difference. Wow, I feel like I'm ready to go about my day with a positive attitude now. Okay, so that's that. So now we're gonna kind of finish off with the brows, some lashes and blush and lips, and then we'll be good. We'll have you out of here in the next 20 minutes. It's really hard to do these and be fast because there's so many steps involved. But again, once you actually get your own kind of little, um, you know, makeup everyday process going, it should just become natural and it shouldn't take you all that long, but I love to talk and explaining it. You just have to go in depth, otherwise there would be no point in me taking over this live. Okay, so for my brows, I'm gonna show you guys something really cool actually. This is great for anybody on here that has um, really stubborn brows or potentially you have brows that grow downwards 
or maybe you have brows that, you know, you have a perfect part of your brow and you wish the rest of it looks that way. Or if you just want your brows to look more fluffy and you just want to lift up the eye in a non-invasive way. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this, if you did hop on here, uh, GP Makeup The Beauty House, once we moved into our new location, we started offering brow services, but sadly we had to cancel all of them because then three days later, this whole COVID tragedy came about. So the big service that we had started booking that we will have to now postpone, of course, it's called brow lamination. Not sure if anybody here, here has heard of it. So basically what brow lamination is, is it's a perm for your eyebrows. That's like the best way to put it or a blowout for your eyebrows. So for someone like me, my eyebrows are very full already. And naturally I, I do have a pretty good shape going on. However, they're not as fluffy as I wish they were. Now we have some clients that their eyebrows, they completely like, especially here onwards, they grow downwards. Um, or maybe your brows are sparse, or if you just want more of that feathered, really light look, but you don't want to commit to something like permanent makeup, then this is a great treatment because it's not invasive at all. And it lasts six to eight weeks. So I had my brows laminated just over a month ago now. Um, in about two weeks or so, I'm going to redo it just to amp it up. But I'm going to show you what it does. So basically when you get brow lamination, I got my eyebrows perm so that they stay up. But what's so cool about it is that however you brush your brows, they stay that way. So I'm going to come in closer here. So you guys see how naturally my brows, they go like all back together. Well, with the brow lamination, see how I can brush my brows and they're just staying fluffy like that. So that's what's so cool about this treatment. And when it's freshly done, it looks so amazing. And that was just with the spoolie. There's no product in there at all. So it's almost like getting your brows semi-permanently like gelled, but it's cool because you can just style them however you want. And again, it's like a perm for your eyebrows. It's an hour treatment. We have a lot of mature clients that had booked in for the service. And even when we were practicing with the models and we were getting our certification and whatnot, uh, a few of them, they went home and their husbands had asked them if they got Botox because it just, if, especially if your brows naturally grow down, it just lifts the whole forehead. Like look how my whole forehead just looks so much more structured and tight. So yeah, I highly recommend this. If you have any questions about it, definitely send me a message after this and we can get you on the wait list for when we are able to service again. And one thing that I also wanted to add that I like to use just to maintain my brows and to keep them strong, this is also great for your lashes. It's by Essentials by Nature, another Edmonton based company. It's called Luscious Lashes. I also carry this on the website, gpmakeupinc.com. And so this is a serum, a natural serum to grow your lashes. But I also like to put this in my eyebrows to keep them healthy and it helps them grow. My mom, you should see the results that she has experienced just from applying this religiously every day. She does it before she goes to bed. But I like to use it as well, not only to keep my brows growing, but I like to use it just like as a gel and it smells so nice because there's a lot of natural essential oils in here. And this whole thing is 30 bucks. So that's all I do for the brows. But if you do need some more color in the brows, I don't have one on me, but we have a product by that brand Vasanti. It's called their brow powder pencil. So, so beautiful, highly recommend. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop some mascara on. And then I'm gonna show you how to put on some false lashes. You might think that's extra for an everyday look, but that's why I keep my eyes super natural because for me, lashes make the big difference. This is by L'Oreal. It's called L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black. And I'm just going to apply mascara. Typically, I like to do it on the top and bottom, but lately I've been liking a clean bottom lash line, which is kind of funny. And just so you know, this is Makeup by Mario's favorite mascara. He's a huge celebrity makeup artist. And that's who inspired me to try this years ago when I went to his course. Do we have any other questions? Okay, so that's that. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pop these lashes on. So for me, my lashes naturally, they're not curled. They're decently thick, but they're nothing too crazy or like unbelievable. So this is my lash line here, G-Class Lashes. 
Um, the style that I'm going to put on is called Gretzi. It's my style, obviously one of the best ones. I'm being sarcastic. My actual favorite one is called the Bridget. Um, so this is it right here. So this one is kind of like an in-between. It's great to just get that, uh, you know, voluminous look, but not being too wild. And I love this style because I don't have to pair it with a crazy makeup look. That being said though, most of these lashes, what's so nice about them is whether you are getting a really thick pair or something more thin, they have a really natural look to it. And you can actually wear these lashes up to 25 times. So I'm gonna show you how to pop these on and what's so special. I'm just getting a little bit of this excess glue off of here from the last wear. So when I said you can wear them up to 25 times, the only thing that should be getting on these lashes is the glue. And that's what I'm gonna talk about. It's called Star Glue. We also have this on the site, it's only eight bucks. The reason that I love this glue though is because it comes off of the band so nicely. So I just peeled off what was left on the band. So you can see I've worn these five times already and they don't even look worn. The band is perfectly clean. So that's why I put mascara on my own lashes first because now we're going to go ahead and pop these falsies on. And again, no mascara on the falsies. The only thing that should be going on them is a glue. So what I'm going to do is take this glue. This is a latex based glue. So if you do have a latex allergy, you won't be able to use this. However, that is a rare allergy, but it does happen. If you do have a latex allergy though, Duo makes a latex free glue. It's not as strong as this of course, but it will do. So I pop some glue on the back of my hand here and I use this like a brush. The reason I do that is because you never want to apply the glue straight onto the lash band because it can come out of this tube really quickly and you don't want to ruin your lashes. And then what I do is I hold the lash like this. A lot of people want to flip it back, but I actually like to apply it like this and I apply a thin layer on the top of the band. The reason being is if you put the glue on the back of the band, it's actually going to then glue the false lash to your natural lash hairs and we don't want that to happen. So when we pop it on the top, it's actually going to allow us to adhere it to your eyelid and that way we're not going to damage any of our lashes. So if you are a person that has had lash extensions forever and you're going through a withdrawal because you can't get your lashes filled now, um, send me a message. I've made kind of a template on the style of lash extensions that you may have had and what would be like an equivalent style to that through G-Class lashes. The most expensive lashes in the collection are $35, but again, you can wear them up to 25 times or more. And what makes them last so long, you guys, is the glue. So make sure that you get this. It's only eight bucks and it's what keeps the lashes really nice and clean. This lash applicator we also carry, this is 10 bucks. Um, this is great if you aren't good at putting lashes on or if you just wanna make your process that much easier because it lets you hold the whole lash. You can use tweezers, but the problem with that is it can only hold on to a small part of the lash band and it makes it really wobbly and flimsy. Where this, you'll see, what I do is I just take a small mirror and what I'm gonna do is look into the mirror and I tell people to look down because that way you can see where the lashes are going and I'm gonna get the center of this lash to hit a center of my natural lash line. And then all I'm gonna do is take my time and very slowly just make sure that that outer corner is popped on as well as the inner. And there you go. So you're probably like, wow, how does she do that so quickly? For sure it takes some practice, but I'll tell you this, these lashes have a memory band formula. So what that means is once you wear them once, they formed your eye and so it really is as easy as you just saw me just popping them back on um, and they look so nice and wispy and fluffy and then what I do is I just pop a little bit of pressure just right along that lash line there just to make sure that they are adhered nicely and then we're gonna get ready for the other one and again there's a ton of styles our newest collection is actually called the mini collection so if you have like smaller eyes or if you're scared of length, like these ones are decently long, not insane, but I also have a lot of room here between my lash line and my brow arch. But if you want something that's more subtle, there's a mini collection. I would highly recommend those because they are the same quality and they have that, that nice natural curl and look to them, but they're just made shorter. Shorter and more natural. So they're great if you have a smaller eye, but if you like volume or whatever, then if you have huge eyes, it's a free for all. You can try whatever you want. So again, we'll get this one ready. Lashes just make such a difference for me. This, like I don't even waste my time doing a bunch of eyeshadow because for me, the lashes is what changes my face and it's what makes me feel confident. And we'll go ahead and do this one. 
So again, I hit it to the center and then all, oh, all I'm gonna do. Okay, so if that ever happens to you, I just waited a little, I didn't wait enough. So the glue was still a little wet. So you want it to be tacky. So typically you wanna wait like 20 seconds or so. So now if you see I redid it, it's no problem. So if you ever put them on, they're sliding everywhere. It's just too wet. So just wait a second or take it off, count to like five and then redo it. So if you struggle putting on lashes too, that could likely be your case. If they're flying around everywhere, you're just being a little impatient. So you wanna wait till they are tacky and then they'll sit into place. And this glue is comes out white, but it will dry clear. And again, I'm just going to pop some pressure. And another little trick, just to make sure they're really on there, is you can just kind of pinch your lashes together with the lash band. And I find that this just gives it a nice lift. It makes them feel like your own. And if you have any separation between your lashes and the lash band, this kind of like forms them together. Huh, I'm complete now. Okay, so any questions about that, let me know you guys. And again, looking down into the mirror with this really, really helps. Okay, so we got two steps left. We're gonna pop on some blush and then the lips. So for blush, this is another Vasanti product also on our website. This is my favorite blush in the world. It's called Life's a Peach. I like their blushes because they come with both of a matte as well as a luminous finish. And a lot of people are scared of peach. If that's you, but you like the look of it, I would highly recommend you try this because it's like the perfect peach. It's not too orange and it's not too corally. It just looks really nice and natural. Even if you naturally get rosy or if you are a really um, pale skin type. So what I do is smile. And I focus this on the apples of my cheeks here. And then when there's not much left on the brush, I just kind of blend it up into that contour. This can really add some use back into the skin and it just ties it all together. And I like these blushes too. I find a lot of blushes, they kind of wear off on me really quickly. Like after a few hours, they're not existent where this one is just really soft. And another trend that I've been into is just putting a little bit on my nose. It just kind of makes this whole thing come together. And it's just a little more cohesive. And then I just take my blending brush that I used earlier with that powder on it. It's quite clean, but I just like to kind of buff everything together. Okay. And then the last thing is the lips. This is my favorite lip liner ever. I've been wearing this color for like five years and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. This is the one color, but I'm trying to find the other one. I think it fell. Oh, I see it down here in me. One sec, you guys. Okay. So these lip liners are by a brand called The Real Her. Fun fact, when we were first getting into this industry, we had started our makeup classes and we had emailed like a hundred companies to see if they would be able to like donate any product for our attendees to use in our makeup courses. Since we were just starting out, we simply just couldn't afford to provide makeup <laughs> for people. And out of all of the companies that we emailed, and I'm talking like the big giants, Real Her was the only one that responded to us and they sponsored us. And four years later, we have a great relationship with them still. Their, grand, their brand has grown so much, ours has grown so much. And I've been retailing their products for just over a year now, which is super cool. They're based in Orange County, California. So this lip liner right here is the perfect nude. It is so, so nice. The color is called I Love Myself. Their brand is also very geared towards empowering women through makeup, which is very much in a line of what we believe in. And this is like another shade, I am confident. So their packaging is adorable, but these lip liners are the bomb. They are $21 and I like them because they're super creamy. So I'm just gonna line my lips here and you'll see what I mean by this. So I'll just line underneath. So when I say this is the perfect nude, what I mean by that is that it's not like too orangey and it's not too pink, but it's also not so nude that you look washed out and just not alive. Um, my mom even, she usually likes to wear color, but she's been into nudes lately, but she's been using the same color for about three years 
because it honestly I haven't tried this color on one person and I've never liked it on them it just works good on everybody and then I'm gonna line the top so I love this because it's almost like a few shades darker than your natural lip line And I like it because it matches every lipstick or lip gloss that you have except for red. Like it's it's just like overdrawing your lips a little bit and you can just even wear it as a lipstick. So I'll do that for you guys just to show you how creamy they are. They also come with a, a free sharpener which is really cool. Love this color. Do you guys see what I mean? And it feels so nice on the lips. Like it's very creamy and it's not dry or chalky looking. And then you can just use it as is, but if you want to amp it up, I just pulled myself out a fresh um, little gloss here. This is my other favorite color by them, gloss. It's called I Am A Rock Star. So I think we are all rock stars during this crazy time. And I love this because it's like the perfect baby pink. So this is very pigmented. You could just wear it as is, but I love to do lip liner because it kind of brings symmetry to my face. So what I'm going to do is just pop a little bit on. And rub that together. And I like their glosses because they're not sticky. Like I find a lot of glosses that feels like you have glue on your lips or they even smell or taste bad. This one is super natural and all of their makeup products have a lot of natural essential oils in them. So you don't feel like you're dry throughout the day, which is really good. And there we have it. What do we think you guys? I hope this really helped you out. I feel like a new person whether you are working from home or you're still going to work or if you are not working and you are just stuck in the house like a lot of us are, I honestly think just doing your makeup every day, whether it's a little bit or you just wanna go all out, for me it's a great way to kind of put my best face forward and have a positive attitude and just feel productive as well as beautiful. I think it's just a really nice treat and a good way to impact your attitude as well as your self-confidence. So I really hope that this everyday makeup look worked for you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to follow me on Instagram. My handle is GP Makeup. Send me a message about any of the products that I used or if you'd like me to recommend an alternative, I would be more than, um, more than happy, sorry, to do so. And if there are any of the products that you did like on here that were either from me the Santi line or the Real Her line or the lashes or the skincare, those are all on gpmakeupinc.com. So if you have any questions about those, I would be more than happy to help you. So I hope that this worked for you. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching with me. And if you do try any of the products or if you try to recreate this look, I would love to see how it turned out. So I thank you again. Thank you, Des, for this opportunity. I think it's so awesome how you're always just taking that extra mile to introduce new people to your platform and just get everybody in this community together during this time. So thank you guys so much. Talk to you soon.